But what it do, it's your boy King Hutch, and today is June Teeth, and I'm lit lit. And as you guys know that I am a black African American male, but how black am I? I'm this black. You already know what it do. We rocking the dashiki, bro. We rocking the bling bling. You already know how we do it over here in Hutch territory. So that being said, it's Juneteenth. For those who don't know what it is in simple terms, Juneteenth is simply the 4th of July for black people. Now don't feel bad. Don't feel bad if you didn't know about it. It's something that I've been celebrating low key by myself for the last six to eight years, which means I didn't know it all my life. And many black people didn't know about it, which gets into the point of some things that we're gonna go over later. But yeah, so, and to those who don't think that it should be a national recognized holiday, just support it anyway so you can get an extra day off work. Juneteenth is important because of the long journey that it sparked. It was announced on June 19, 1865, that slaves were technically free. The Emancipation Proclamation given by uh, Abraham Lincoln was given in 1863 but it didn't reach texas until 1865 so that's two years more of slavery directly the reason i say technically is because then for another hundred years we still had to deal with black codes jim crow laws for another hundred years but thankfully the avatar has returned am i right <laughs> No, this isn't funny at all. Honestly, for me personally, it's awesome that I get to now celebrate it, not just with some few even woke black people that I know, but with everybody and that it's now beginning to become something that we all get to take part of. I don't like to look at holidays and whatnot as something to separate us and be like, oh, this is for black people. This is for white people. I think it's something that we should all come together and enjoy together. Let's fast forward 150 years later. What are we doing? What we see a lot of right now, people are still getting lynched. It's being written off as suicides, but yeah. You see, the issue is more bold than ever before. We see a lot of people on the other side killing cops and police officers. We see a lot more police brutality. People knocking over old people and people pepper or macing people under their masks and whatnot. We see a lot of unnecessary and misguided disrespect towards officers who don't deserve it. The reason I say all of this, and it's like, hush, what side are you on? Are you? Uh, for peace to take place, you have to be peaceful. What we are all fighting for is equality, and we're all fighting for a chance to where when a cop car comes down my street, I don't have to like hide behind my car or hide in my car or whatever. Like, that's what we're fighting for. If we are being, if we're going to war, that's a total different thing. But what we're not asking for is war. We're asking for peace. So my brothers, my sisters, even those who are different creeds or whatnot, I understand that if you're angry, I understand that it's a lot of things that have you frustrated. But let's do it right. Let's make sure that we do it right. And to the police officers that still don't get it, I just hope that you do. You know, we got police officers that are standing by us, police officers that are kneeling, police officers that are walking arm in arm, police officers that aren't abusing anybody, police officers that just want to go home and see their family like everybody else. Let's just aim for mutual respect. At the very least, at the very least. We have people who've lost their lives as of recent, like Robert Fuller, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Tony McDade. All of these people didn't choose to be a martyr. All these people didn't choose to have their life snuffed from them. But I'm not gonna let their lives go down in vain. And neither are, neither is the movement. None of us are. So to my black community, I've just noticed some things into which we can do to push this forward. This is our holiday. This is something that we should be leading, something that 
we should be taking control of, something that we should still be learning. Our whole history has been snuffed from us, erased from us. Newspaper articles have been snuffed, erased, burned. Pages of our history have been torn out. We have professors, we have scientists, we have lawyers, we have wealthy people. They were either just all killed, hung, or just erased from history. You see, don't don't belittle ourselves. Don't think that we are only accustomed to rapping, to being athletes. We are smart. We are influential as well. So I say all this to say this to my black, to my fe- blah, my fellow black people. Let's not belittle those who choose to wear the badge proud. You know how hard it is to be a black cop in an all-white sanction? It's not easy. But that's what we need to do. I, In my community, I've witnessed a lot of belittling children of becoming police officers, becoming lawyers, becoming doctors, becoming uh, politicians. Let's build each other up in positions of authority. So we don't have to rely so much on the charity and sympathy of those in power. Anyone who says, pick yourself up by the bootstraps, I promise you, ironically enough, they will fear us doing that more than anyone else. So let's uplift our brother, let's uplift our sisters. Your kid says, I wanna be a police officer, say, okay, baby. Let, let's let's get you let's get you suited up. Let's take you down to the academy. Let's get you, you know, what you need to know. Because until there's enough of us in there, we can't expect change. We can only do so much from the outside. In order to affect change, we have to go from the inside out. Okay? So we need more black politicians. We need more black cops. Let's stop saying, oh, you gonna grow up to be a pig? No. Let's say, go go ahead, represent. Because that's the only way that this is going to change. And I know what some of you guys are thinking, but I'm white. What am I supposed to do? What, what Sit there and shut. No, I'm just playing. Y'all. I'm just playing. <laughs> Whatever you can do. Sign petitions. Use your voice to reach those who we can't. Inflection is key. Now, This is important because I'm just a black dude from St. Louis, Missouri. The way that I may speak to some people, some people, oh yeah, cool, I articulate. But some people don't want to see my face with the words that I'm saying. Simply take my words and give it to someone else. I don't care about copyright. I don't care about misquotes. Let's just get the word out there. Some of you guys have family members that are very traditional in that sense and to where they're like, I've never had to deal with black people or colored people all my life. Why should I care now? Like, it's you, use your voice to talk to them. Say something when you guys are behind closed doors and you see that your family, friends or whatever saying things that they shouldn't be saying or doing things that they shouldn't be doing or plotting things that they shouldn't be plotting. Use your voice. What else can I do as a white man? It's simple. Leave your doors unlocked on Martin Luther King Boulevard. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm playing. I'm, I'm kidding. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I'll do that to my fellow white people and other nationalities. Our history has been hidden for centuries. Not even we know everything about us. We don't know everything of what we should be. We don't know our own heritage to the full extent. I'm promoting an open dialogue. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Simply asking questions to learn, to understand is what we're aiming for. We're not aiming for your wallet. We're not aiming for you guys to just give us everything that you have and you know go to the wayside no we're just asking for a mutual understanding let's come together let's take the pages from our history books the pages from your history books and put them together okay that's that's all that we can really hope to do let's get weird let's get uncomfortable let's address the elephant in the room as a society i agree to remove racist rhetoric that are based on old-time humor from blackface don jemima I- I think that it's not a problem if it stays, but it's definitely a step forward if a company can be honest 
about its origins. Germany abolished all things Nazism. To this day, they have a zero tolerance for it. Now, I understand we are the land of the free and we have freedom of speech and things like that, but I believe that this is an opportunity in a way that we should follow suit. Not because, well, it's my right to be racist. Yeah, it, it is. But just because it is your right doesn't make it right. You shouldn't want to be. Let's follow suit of what it is to be right. It may be your right, but it's your moral obligation to want equality for everyone. Companies like Reebok have claimed to ensure that the net, the 30% that thirty of their new jobs that are coming out are to be filled by minorities. African Americans, Latinos, Asians, whatnot. This is important. And it's not because we want to steal your jobs. This is important for many reasons. For one, in places like technology, and even facial recognition. You have um, things like facial recognition for like Amazon and whatnot. And one of the problems that they often occur is that black people are undetectable by these things that a lot of times they get them mixed up. Well, it's like, oh, it's because they're darker. But no, it's because if you look at who's developing the software and everybody that's behind that, it's nothing but an office full of white people who only identify, who can only identify their characteristics, which is normal. So getting more of us into those in, in those things and those programs will allow for us to better update our technology, better move forward and better to progress. But what does that have to do with like Reebok? What does that have to do with being in the office? What does that have to do with my job? A lot of times I hear people say, oh, well, I have a black friend and he doesn't say anything. Or he doesn't do anything. Or there's a black person in our office and none of us are racist. We all like him or her or whatever. You like what they showed me as a personal example. I can acclaim to this. Being the only black in an all-white society, being a only black in an all-white office, in an all-white building, school, whatever, is literally equivalent to being like a house slave over a field slave. You learn to talk proper. You have a better treatment. Yeah, oh, I get to sleep in a bed. Oh, cool. You know, you've got better privileges and whatnot. You're still a slave. But you are never fully authentic. You are never 100%. So, if that being said, you know, at least the things like code switching, which I talked about in my previous video but essentially where I won't talk to you about issues that I go through because I know you can't relate and so to keep the environment healthy or to keep the environment moving forward I'm not gonna bring up my black problems and things that are going on and um, even the way that I talk is gonna be different than if I was around other black people so why again why does that affect you because if you just know one black person if you just have that one black friend or that one black co-worker all you know is what they show you you want to know how to better understand black people see how black people group up see how black people engage together you can't learn about black people from simply monitoring a black person in science we have different you do several different experiments even after you get one conclusion you do the experiment again and again and again and again until it's undeniably proven you can't get a full experiment with just one black person you can't not even with me, not even with Kanye, not even with Jay-Z, not even with LeBron James. You can't until you are in an environment to where it is natural for you to see black people in their natural habitat and using their natural instincts. You'll never fully understand. I mean, you probably will never fully understand, but you won't understand as much. Paw Patrol, chill, come on now. I think there's a difference between pandering and aiding. <sighs> Hear me, Hollywood, anime, cartoons, comic books, or whatever else of formal visual entertainment that there is. Let's not let's not do this right here. Let's not change out white characters for black ones. Like James Bond. Like I I I'm sorry. Like I'm like, oh that's dope, but let's not let's make different characters. Let's make new story arcs. Let's make new storylines. Let's make new characters in general. Let's not just also implant random black people into things to just seem like you're diverse. I'm looking at you, shameless. There's a difference there's a difference between being supportive and finding a way to get to show that you care versus we don't want you to self-harm yourself. We don't want you guys to give your businesses away. We don't want you guys to do any of 
with that. All that we're asking for is a few things, okay? We're asking for equality, we're asking for an end to police brutality, and we understand that this is probably gonna keep going on to an extent, but can we reduce it? Can we make changes? Can we make strides? If we could abolish it, that would be great. But until that day comes, I would like to believe that would be the days of my children, that they can, you know, see a police officer and not worry about getting violated. <laughs> but this is what we should all expect, guys. This is what we should expect to see in the future. Anything that's worthwhile is never easy. Change is no stranger to resistance. I encourage everyone to stay uplifted. Black Lives Matter will not be trending on Twitter forever and Facebook forever and Instagram forever. But hopefully it trends in our hearts, it trends in our minds to the point where it becomes the new cultural norm to just be aware. What we've seen will be written in the history book of the USA. And let's not ignore this chapter like the ones we have before. This is a revolution. This is peace. This is what it means to be black, strong, proud, together, united. It's not a, it's no longer a game between which race is better. It's no longer a game between between how can blacks get the upper hand or whites get the upper hand. It's something where we all have to come together and care about the next man to us. And when we accomplish that, then we can focus on corruption. Then we can focus on world issues. Then we can focus on outer space exploration. But first, we have to start at home. First, we have to start right here. We gotta start right here. This is where it starts. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you guys think below. Um, it's your boy King Hutch, I'm out.